Hi there and welcome to episode 18 of Stay Calm, Grounded and Connected through Coronavirus. I hope that you're well uh, and I hope that this week, which is week 95 in uh, in lockdown, I hope it's going all right for you. Um, and listen, I've got, I've got something a bit different to talk to you about today because um, we're going to be talking about the power of understanding what your limiting beliefs are. And the reason that I wanted to choose this today is a couple of reasons. So I was writing about this in Zen Seekers from um, Sunday, just gone. So if you're not signed up to Zen Seekers, please do, it's free. Just get on over to myzendays.com um, and sign up because it's it, it just contains loads of information and ideas and tools and techniques that can really help you to shift your thinking. And it kind of, what I want to do is to shift your thinking into a place of feeling much more empowered in your own life, much more confident, much clearer, much calmer, much more balanced. Um, and there's loads of really, really good, like really fabulous content in there. And so the other day, hello everyone, thanks for joining. Um, the other day I was talking about, I call it the stories that we tell ourselves, but basically what this is all about is limiting beliefs. Um, and it's important, I think, that while we've got this time, I know so many of us are A, not just busy, but probably even more busy now during lockdown than we were beforehand. And I know it's especially tough when you've got kids, when you've got kids with special needs, and there's all sorts of things that we're having to do, okay? But I wanna just plant some seeds in your mind because the reason is my Zen days is all about, so it's all about like helping you to have a calmer, happier, more fulfilled life where you can really feel more able to be unapologetically completely you in this lifetime so that you understand yourself more, you shift your, th you shift your thinking in lots of little different ways in order that you put yourself in a better position to be able to handle your life and the world and problems and all the things that happen in it, okay? And so when we come to talking about limiting beliefs, this is something that can massively change the game for you because what it is basically, a limiting belief is something that we pick up um, most of the time when we're really little. So largely kind of in the, in, the first, in the first few years or maybe up to when we're about seven in our lives. And the reason that we do that is because our brains are like basically little sponges. So we come into the world and we're like, teach me, teach me, I know nothing, right? And so everything that people say to you, hi Teresa, thank you for joining. Mwah. So everything that people say to you, um, especially when it's people who are in authority, so if it's your parents, if it's your teachers, um, you know, maybe if you go to church, if it's so, if someone who has a position of authority in the church, but people that you look up to, they tend to, they'll say some things and because your brain is such a little sponge going, teach me, teach me, I know nothing, um, these stories can actually really stick. And there's a brilliant story that I wanna tell you that really helps to bring this concept to life. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what are limiting beliefs. I'm gonna tell you the story about the elephant and the twig. You might have heard of it. If you haven't, it's gonna blow your mind. Um, but also at the end, so if you stick around until the end, I'm gonna tell you that if there are limiting beliefs that are holding you back in your life, then there's a process that you can follow. And all I'm gonna to do today is open up the first few questions for you that you can get going and get journaling on to be able to start becoming more aware and becoming more able to identify what your limiting beliefs might be in your life that are holding you back. And the clue is often we've got so many that we're not even aware of them, okay? So it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of dedication to be able to sit down and say, what are the things I keep telling myself? So anyway, let me tell you the story about the elephant and the twig, because this kind of brings the whole thing together. So in India, the way that they, because obviously they like they have loads, they have loads of elephants in India. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining. Mwah! Big hugs and kisses. Um, so in India, when they train in, when they train elephants because they want them to be obedient, when they're little, what they do is they tie them to a tree, right? And so if you imagine you've got this like cute diddy little baby elephant who's tied to this massive tree trunk and they, tr they basically thrash around because they're trying to escape. So they've got, they've got like one of their, what do you even call it, hooves on an elephant, but they're, they're basically tied like that to the tree and they're trying to get away and trying to get away and they're really looking to be able to free themselves and get away because they just want to be able to be not tied down. But they learn because they can't get away because the trunk is so, the tree trunk's so strong, 
they learn that it's really pointless to keep trying. So they hurt themselves, they thrash around, but they keep teaching themselves and they keep learning. Actually, I'm trying to get away from this massive freaking tree trunk and I can't, I'm not strong enough. I'm only little and the tree trunk's massive, it's stronger, I can't get away. And this is where this is where the thing about learned helplessness comes in. So that's a psychological term, which is where you basically try lots of different times to be able to do a particular thing. But if you fail, 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 you learn it's pointless trying. OK, so you've got this Diddy elephant. He's been chained to well, chained or tied to this tree trunk. He's tried to get away and he can't. So he's learned eventually it's called I'm powerless. I'm powerless, I just can't get away from it, I can't change anything. So he stops trying. But the reality is that you end up, the elephant grows up, right, and becomes this like gargantuan ton weight where it could easily, like, it could easily rip this tree down or whatever. The point is though, because the elephant's been trained, you can tie that elephant to a twig and it won't even try to escape, okay? So there's a brilliant book about this called The Elephant and the Twig, which kind of talks all about this concept and what, what's happening basically in your mind when you really tie yourself to this particular belief that you might have struggled with at first, but eventually you just learned that actually, oh, well, that's just the reality. I just better kind of believe it and stick with it and not try to make reality be any different. OK, so let me know if that makes sense. And what happens with us then? So when, when we're growing up, we're basically tied to certain different trees, okay? And limiting beliefs end up being the twig, okay? The twig that invariably you could snap, you could pick it up and chuck it away, but you're so wedded to it and you're so used to believing it and you're so, like, I guess kind of tied up and your identity's tied up with it. So a lot of common, like really common negative beliefs, limiting beliefs can be things around money, around relationships. And it's basically like you having limiting beliefs about the power or the extent or the expansiveness of your own abilities. OK, so it's where you, you've picked up something from when you were younger because someone said something to you. And to be honest with you, they might not even have meant it. They might not have realized the impact and they probably didn't realize that your little baby brain that was not fully developed was just sucking up any information that it was given. OK, but this is what happens. So you pick up a belief. It could be things like, you know, I had a friend whose family always talked about money is evil. Right. So it's no wonder that when it came to her in her business, she couldn't make any money because she had this underlying belief and story that she was telling herself that like money's really evil and it's for selfish people um, and there isn't enough money to go around. So she had to do loads of work to try to identify it and see where it came from and then try to work her way past it. Other things are, you know, I've, I've got other friends whose parents or single parents said men cannot be trusted, you know? And so in her life, her experience and the, everything that she always falls back on is men just can't be trusted. Um, what's another one? So for, for me, you know, when I was growing up, it was always, you know, you've got to get a proper job. And my parents were amazing. And this is not a criticism of my parents, because obviously all they care about is that you're safe and you're secure and you're like financially able to support yourself. But it was you've got to get a proper job. And so I really felt the pressure when I was at university and when I was traveling, I was doing all this sort of stuff about which massive company am I going to end up working for? And so, you know, when you look back at my career, it's 20 years of working in massive corporate giants, you know, doing big proper jobs because that was the belief I had was that I had to get a proper job. And so it took a lot of work for me because I wanted always to have my own business. I always wanted to go out on my own. It took a lot of work and a lot of courage, probably 20 years worth of work and courage to be able to go, actually, there's no, there's no reason why I can't create my own proper job um, and so, so this is the thing like if, if you can think about are there things are there stories that get in your way and that stop you from taking the actions and taking the direction maybe that you really want to do in your life the things that you really want to do 
because you come back to this story, because genuinely that story could be just a twig, like the twig that the elephant's got. And it could be that I'm not calling you an elephant, even though we've all been eating far too much during lockdown, but, um, but it could be that you're the sort of, you know, you're the elephant in that story, which is now you're fully grown, you're strong, you're able, you could snap that fucking twig if you wanted to, but you've still got this belief that it's, that it's just true. You know, you've got this belief that if you try to pull away, it wouldn't work. Okay. Another story, actually, there was, there was a really good friend of mine who is actually in her 70s. And um, we'll call her Mary. She's not actually called Mary, but we'll call her Mary. And what, she, what had happened to her, basically, in her life is when she was really, really young, she was trying to do something like maths homework. And, um, and it was really hard. And I think there was a parent or a teacher or someone was trying to help her. But they said to her, this is too hard for you, you can't do it, okay? And so this must have happened, I think she was about six or seven. And so by the time, like, we were talking about this, and it only, it, her twig only snapped when she was in her 70s. So that's a lifetime. That's a lifetime of whenever things got hard, her reaction was, bang, she threw her hands up in the air and said, it's too hard, I can't do it. So, so do you see, like, do you see whether it's the elephant in the twig or whether it's my so-called friend Mary or whoever it is, like, because you pick up this story and you don't challenge it, you just take it for granted and it becomes part of, you know, like part of your psychology, basically, and part of the way that you see your world and it's part of the filters that you kind of look, look at your experience through. You don't challenge it. And actually, that's such a shame because it's probably a load of bullshit. So my friend Mary, there will have been, you know, in her entire life, loads of things that were really hard that of course she could totally handle. Of course she could totally handle. If she'd decided, or if someone had told her a bit of a different story when she was younger, or if she told herself a bit of a different story, which is, it's hard, I don't know what to do right, right away, but I'll be able to figure it out. You know, if she'd had that kind of, the muscle of resilience and the muscle of kind of believing in herself, rather than this thing of just, ah, pff, you know, fuck it, up, it's too hard, I don't wanna do it. And so, um, so, so the, whole, the whole like limiting beliefs thing, it is really important. And like I was saying before, even though we're super busy now, when we're in lockdown, it's a good seed, I think, to, to just plant. I wanna plant it in your head and I want you to do some thinking if you think it's going to serve you well, to think about actually what are the what are the things I say to myself that come up on repeat all the time? So is it something about money? Is it something about relationships? Something about intimacy? Something about your own ability? Is it something like, you know, like in my case, I would love to have my own business, but I wouldn't dare. I can't. I've got to have a proper job and work for like a big company. You know, and there might be something totally different for you, but if you can start to allow it to bubble up, and allow it to just be there and then ask yourself some questions around actually, is it is it true of me now? You know, you might have been holding on to something since you were four or five or six or seven. This is the reality. You might have been holding on to this story and it could be a total and utter house of cards story that gets in the way of you really reaching your full potential and being able to do everything that you wanna do with your life because you've got this belief and you think it's true. So what if I was to say to you, it's not true, or what if you were to do the thinking and go, actually it's not true. And so, so the way to do it, you can do, I mean, I talk about journaling all the time because journaling is really powerful because it's basically like you having a really detailed, intimate chat with yourself, okay? That isn't the same as just thinking about things and letting it go round and round and round. This is where you actually, you know, just splurge it all onto a paper or onto a bit of paper and write it out for yourself and ask yourself some questions. And so the four journaling questions I really want, I want you to have a go at if you do suspect that you are limiting yourself because of certain things that you're telling yourself and you suspect, like I do, that they're not true. <laughs> And that actually you could be more and feel more and do more and behave differently and have a much better experience of your life and of yourself. Then the questions are, are these ones, okay? So the four questions are, 
So what, are the, what were the stories that you were told when you were growing up about what your limits were on your abilities? Okay, so I'll put these questions because you might not you might not be able to do it now if you're on your lunch break and things like that. I'll put these questions um, in with the video, but it's trying to identify what were the things that you were told. So what are those recurring thoughts? Okay, that come up. The second questions are what are the stories that you continue to tell yourself now? So you, if you've already been on a process of like you know personal development and. Um, and, and trying to do some kind of personal growth work, then you may have already come across this kind of thing before. But if you haven't, it's really liberating and it's really freeing to finally challenge yourself on what you've been telling yourself is the truth. You think it's the truth and actually it turns out it's not the truth. And you are more than what you thought and you can do more than what you thought. Okay, that's the second question. The third one is take one and put it to the test. Okay. So if, for example, you've told yourself, you know, what, what would be a good one you've told yourself? Um, well, take mine. So I couldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly do my own business or have my own business and do my own thing because I need to have a proper job. I've got to have a proper job. I've got to go and, you know, got to go and work in a corporate giant. Um, and so instead of just repeating that, but say to yourself, well, actually, is that true? How old am I now? And is that true? No, it's not true. There's loads and loads and loads of examples of people who have decided to make the leap and decided to kind of quit all that kind of world and go off and do their own thing and been successful. So that's that's what you do in question three is to say, right, okay, well, if um, if I was to do that, if I was to do this thing, might it work? Is there any evidence to suggest that if I believe the opposite thing, then actually that could be true too. Hello and thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we're talking today about limiting beliefs and how you can start to identify them because then after that, it's the, the work on trying to break them down. And then the fourth question on this is, how would I feel if I was to drop that story? So if I was to drop that limiting belief, right? The thing that says I can't do it. If I was to drop it, how would I feel? And what would I do differently? What would I think differently? How would I behave differently if I was to drop it? Because if you like to just close the loop, coming back to that story about the elephant and the twig, the elephant, when it's a fully grown, powerful beast, like, I mean, it's just beautiful, massive, strong beast. When it's really strong in its body and its physicality, but actually in its brain, it's still going, I must be tied to this twig. You know, like it, that's such a shame and I don't want for you and I don't want for me, I don't want for anybody to be living in that kind of reality, which is where you never challenge the limits that either other people have put on you and they've stuck or the limits that um, the limits that you kind of tell yourself now, because at the end of the day, you know, it kind of all comes down to people have these limits because it's a self-defense mechanism, because people are scared of either failing or they're scared of success. Like, you know, a lot of people are scared of success because they're not sure they're gonna be able to handle it, but they're also scared of, um, of failure as well. So there's, there's loads of really good reasons and good background as to why we tell the stories and we understand where, where they're coming from and that so many of them come when you are so little and you're walking around like SpongeBob SquarePants, you know, where you just absorb everything. Um, but actually there's a thing that you need to do, I think, when you are like an adult, like we are, to, to go, actually, should I still believe that stuff or is that a pile of crap? Is that a pile of crap and can I do more and have I got evidence to counter this funny belief I've got in my head? So, so we've been talking today, I know a couple of people have just joined and hello, um, it's lovely to have you here. So we've been talking today about the elephant and the twig, which is a story that really helps you understand whether there's limitations that you're putting on yourself and on your life and on your capability that are stopping you from really reaching your potential. So we've talked a bit about where they come from and what you can start to do to let them bubble up and identify them. So I'll put those journaling questions in with the video and for anyone who really does suspect that they could be being more and doing more and enjoying more of their life and freeing themselves and empowering themselves, then this is a really, really important exercise for you. Okay, I'm just gonna have a quick check in the comments because I know there was a couple um, earlier. 
So Isla's saying, I've learned that the I've learned that theory the hard way. Um, you're like my personal <laughs> personal library with the amazing book recommendations. Well, there's another one for your pet. So this is the, the elephant and the twig. You'll love it. And actually, I think he talks about like 15 different things that um, that you can do to really start to help to really break down um, those limiting beliefs. Oh, I've just lost your comments. Sorry. And Isla's saying, I've been told I'm not intelligent enough and enrolled in the degree now. Fuck yes. Go on. Go on, girl. That's brilliant. Um, so yeah, challenge yourself. Challenge those limiting beliefs and don't let them rule your life. It's time for you to take charge and to say, actually, if this is not serving me, I'm going to drop it. And I'm not saying you can do it like that. The first step is to understand what are the things that you're thinking that seem to be on a bit of an automatic loop. Um, awareness is the first thing and get that journaling exercise done. Journaling's amazing, get it out on paper, right? I'm gonna love you and leave you and I will see you on Friday. Mwah. Take care, bye.